Hi everybody, welcome to Juma Game Reserve this afternoon. My name is Mark with Tyron Camera and some new folks that I hope you're going to help out in Final Control today. We've got Buatella helping us out. We've got both Yako and Eugene that have taken a crash course in directing and they're going to be helping us out. Seb unfortunately is sick and we're just going to wish him the best and hope that he's going to get better. Uh, we're not too sure what's wrong yet. We, we've got to get him to a doctor. Of course being a Sunday it's a little bit difficult. And hopefully we'll get him get get Seb what he needs in the next day or two. But welcome to a magical afternoon, the most magical afternoon here at Juma Game Reserve, and it's magical because last night we had an incredible storm. We had a thunderstorm of note, lightning that was striking pretty close to the camp. In fact, there was one that Tara and I were talking about. That <laughs> I hit the deck. <laughs> Tara hit the deck. I jumped into my Land Rover. <laughs> I, I grew up in thunderstorms. I had no idea. I grew up in one of the biggest lightning strike, or the highest lightning strike areas of the world. So for me, it, the thunderstorms are par for the course. But boy, there was one crack that, <laughs> and it just so happened that we were actually out here on on the open area. Funny enough, Tara, you must you were here somewhere, weren't you? Oh yeah, we were actually just over the other side. We were over that side. Were you? Because I was between Inga and Yuri's house. Oh, were you? Because that's where most of the lightning was happening all of the oh. time. Anyways, you can come by, whoever you are. Um, Tristan, I'm just going to talk to Tristan quickly. Is it oh. no, Hello, Chris. <laughs> Smile, Tristan. Okay. And Sassy. There was actually some people wanting to see Sassy again. It's getting so big, that little puppy. So what we did, we opened up this afternoon. We opened up on these two big marula trees that are twins. They must have started at the same time. And I was saying this morning that the one on the right was actually alive when I started here. It was ring barked by elephants. But this morning it was draped in vultures. And there were numerous vultures around the open area, what we call quarantine. And there was a kill. We found a shoulder blade. We found stomach contents. We actually know. Me. I was multitasking this morning. I think you did a good job of it, eh? Thanks, Tar. You did a good job too. Let's just check. Yako, just whisper in my ear. Eugene, how are things going back there? Because my earpiece has been out, so I don't know if you've had any starting problems. For all I know, the sun. Perfect. Thank you for that. So what we did is we found an old kill site and... Old, it wasn't that old. Because the vultures had only come in. We were, I, I was sitting with Teddy and the hyenas at the den. And I saw about 50 vultures take to the air simultaneously and shortly afterwards went in and tried to find where they were coming from and I found just up here on the western edge of the open area we found we found we did all of us that were viewing at the time that managed to see the stream through the break in the undersea cable and everything else stomach contents a shoulder blade of a rather large impala but no other evidence and that led me to believe that the hyenas had probably stolen whatever it was the hyena den was one was Teddy's Teddy's mom was there we saw her at first she was alone and she was so full, it looked like she was about to give birth. Yeah, and of course, she I mean, she was like, yeah, I mean, she was, she was more bloated than even those, those lion that we see sometimes on a fresh buffalo kill after they haven't eaten for a week and they engorge themselves. Or they are, yes, never mind. So, I figured that hyena stole the kill. A little skin back hiding in the see if anybody can see it from here just we put the camera at that let me just go back a little if you can't 
can't see me. I can't see you. Spot the stand back. How long should we give you? I don't know. Till the first email comes in. Tara's saying, how long should we give you? Of course, we don't. Anyways, you just try and find it on your screen. Take a oh, screenshot. It, it moved. Scratching an ear. Lying down now. No, it's not. I thought it was lying down for a minute. So it's been a super day. Woke up, it was raining, rain stopped, went on a drive. I multitasked. I drove and I did camera. And the sun was shining when I got back after drive. It's been a pretty good day of heat with the sun and the cloud. And now it's getting over, not overcast, but there's this very, very high inversion layer that is the edge of a front, probably the remains of the front that we've just had. Or it's the super extreme. Actually, I think it's the extreme. If I'm looking at where it's going, it's the extreme of a of a storm cell that's probably raging over Bushbuck Ridge at the moment. Okay. Lying all over the place last night. Actually, maybe we should do that. Maybe we should go north. I'm going to go back along the other side of uh, of the open area. And we'll go up Gallagher Shortcut or Aubrey's or something. We'll go up towards where the Talalas ended up going. Because the Talalas evidently ended up going up towards Sydney's dam. He told me that they were up at his dam last night. But I found lion tracks this morning that at first they were before the rain and I because they were so indistinct I couldn't really even tell whether they were male or female because there's there's no size to them it's it's uh, average person they're not really going to recognize it as a lion track and then I eventually found their tracks proper after the rain so they must have huddled down in the rain somewhere and then sometime later after the rain they started moving which would have been very early this morning and that was Zoe's road and um, Philemon's, Philemon's dip junction, Philemon's cut line. Just looking at that termite mound a sec. I I saw something. Uh, binoculars should be in reach and they're not, they're out of reach. I just thought I saw something in one of those holes. Hmm? I thought I saw a putty tat. No, it was a little bit different to a putty tat. Are you and those lions were actually the Machinga lions, believe it or not. A couple of males that had arrived from the south. And they walked all the way up Zoe's Road, past the hyena then, towards Impala Plains. And then they went south again, back to Arethusa. So we missed them, we didn't see them. A leopard, had, well there were leopard tracks here on, on Buatella Access Road. And that is the leopard, I think, that killed the Impala here, where I saw the vultures on. Okay, we'll practice. What's up there? <laughs> but that's the that is it's like a okay, cat that is how a squirrel gets away from his predator disappears around a branch one side and then appears above it somewhere else see there I said the name so it's no use sending in what it is and that brings me to the subject of the the challenge oh that pretty child
Okay, one wood. One wood hoe. Almost overnight we have gone from dry wintry end of dry season look to a very distinct spring look where almost every single tree is displaying some sort of shade of very pale green very beautiful fresh green as almost as though it's, a, it's almost as though everything was just poised to burst open in this rain and this thunderstorm that came through last night and it all has within a day it's just suddenly done the blades of grass, lots, lots of greys, blades of grass have all opened up, leaves are opening up and it can be misleading because if we don't have any more rain in the next few days it's going to get dry again and we could go a month, six weeks without rain and under those circumstances everything might, well the grass blades themselves will close up a bit, the leaves once they start, they don't stop. So it's a transformation that really has to be experienced. It's the special thing about this time of the year, perhaps. Every time of the year has something special, but this has to be the thing, one of the things about this time of the year that makes it so special. And it, and it happens very quickly. It's not a slow process. It's overnight. It's going to be green soon. So getting back to that impala kill, my guess is Karula. However, however, there were tracks of a leopard that were found on Vuyatela Access Road and there was a report of having seen Mishu, of all people, leopard people, up on Mvubu Road. So it's a possibility that he was here and it was his tracks that were on Weertela Access Road and he made his way around the dam unfortunately we had that power cut so there was a time when the power was down and that was a time when we probably it was when the lion were here at Weertela because there were definitely lion here I heard them in fact they were more outside of camp than the front side of camp where the dam is but Mishu ended up going into the drainage line north of, basically north of Weatella along the Bubu Road. This kind of, it's perfect. This is, this is the kind of weather we're going to find a leopard wandering around. So we're, we're going to go up north now. I want to go up as far northwest as we can towards Sydney's Dam and look around for tracks over there. And then we'll come around to Mvubu Road and Tamboti Pan and we'll sniff around and see if we can find this leopard that I supposedly miss you because boy that would be good I wonder actually you know it'd be interesting to go and have a look at that shoulder blade well what at that place where the kill was because only because there were a few feathers there and there was a little bit of stuff well, apart from the shoulder blade, but I might get a better look at things. I didn't want to spend too much time. There were still a lot of vultures. Ah, evidence. I have found evidence. Schultz. No, how does it go? Eureka, Schultz, I have found it. The culprit. Teddy's mom. Look there. Can anybody guess what that mark is in the robe? Looks very similar to a monitor lizard's track, um, except it's 50 times bigger. It looks very similar to. Well, I'll tell you what it looks similar to. If it's maybe somebody can email Yako and Eugene and FC. Questions at Juma.com. 
might as well get into the swing of things. This is called evidence. Okay, I don't know, can we see? Is it much to see on the camera? Not really. I'm trying to find a spot where it really No, it's just really scrapings. I mean, it is maybe I should go back. We can try. I wasn't even. Maybe alongside, a bit further. Alongside. Yeah, okay, it goes up. That's from Shelly. No, anyway, Shelly is asking a question. Hi, Shelly. Talking about the stomach contents. A very good, very interesting question, actually. Shelly is asking about the stomach contents. Now, what I was looking at there, and maybe somebody will email it what they thought it was true, and I'll hear from Yako. But that was drag marks coming directly from the kill site where I found the stomach contents. And if you had to, on a map, or if you had to take two GPS coordinates, one from where this kill was and one from where the hyena den is, and you were to take coordinates, you could draw a straight line and that drag mark would probably be on that straight line. Anyway, off to our left. This is part of the answer to your question, Shelley. Um, probably not going to hear me, but I'm going to be there. I'm going to walk around there. Actually, I'll put my shoes on for this because I'm walking around stomach contents and things. But I'm going to point out different things. I'll point out one. Let's see. Number one will be the general kill site. Number two will be where the stomach contents are, although they're dried by now. And I don't know. Number three, I'll pick up the vulture feather. get a smell? No, the wind just took the feather. Oh, the wind just took the feather. Oh, the wind's blowing the smell away, luckily. Okay, it's, it's quite an interesting thing. That's one of its ribs. The vultures, excuse me, the vultures missed it because it was underneath probably some of the vegetation that had been trampled. But, yeah, okay, drag marks come directly from that kill site and they go through this little bush and that is straight towards the hyena den that's why Teddy's mom is looking so incredibly fat at the moment the stomach contents to answer Shelley's question she says, uh, Shelley was asking what happens to the stomach contents does the animal absorb it does the animal or the predator does it does the predator eat it and 
it's a number of different things that actually happen and a lot of it has got to do with it depends on what time of the year you know my standard answer to almost everything is it depends and in this case it is it, it's to a large extent it depends on what time of the year i was using that rib bone to scratch through some of the some of the stomach contents which is basically chewed vegetation um it might sound yucky but fortunately for a herbivore it's actually quite clean it is it's just chewed leaves and grasses really going through the, the digestive process and even in, in the driest of seasons there's going to be f something there's going to be there are going to be flies there are the odd beetles even in the dry season but they're very very hardy beetles and usually very very small uh, the larger beetles and the larger insects can't really uh, operate in a very very dry climate at the moment i'd say there are probably three or four species of scarab in there they, they they're not dung beetles as the way we know dung beetles they're very very tiny scarab beetles and they're sifting through it and they're going to probably lay eggs and things there are a few little flies uh around but at this at, until the ma until the majority of dung beetles come out the stomach contents like that eventually just they, they, they it'll all dry up and some of the larvae of those insects will eat it but it'll eventually just get absorbed into the ground. In the height of summer, dung beetles will get into it and the dung beetles will distribute it. So one of our leopards made a kill here early this morning and maybe let's go and look around and see if we can find who it was and where they are. And there's no more lion that I know of in the area. I don't know if anybody heard lion last night. If it all the camera came back. We did have a power failure for a while. Oh, such beautiful light. There's storms still brewing in the south. And if we get a clear, e clear western sky looking into a dark eastern sky, it makes for the most incredible light and the incredible sunset. And it is... No. No, I don't think it's killed by the hyena. It might have been. There's a, there's a possibility that it was. But I suspect it was killed by... Only because there were leopard tracks. Sorry, Yako was just asking if I suspected it was killed by the hyena, or I must confirm. It's a possibility. Um, hyena is actually a better predator than a leopard in any case. I mean, it's more efficient, it's more energy efficient, um, and perhaps more successful, only because a hyena has the kind of stamina that a leopard could only wish for. But because there were leopard tracks here, my guess is that it might have been killed by a leopard and stolen by a hyena. What about Franklin shouting around camp all day? I'm sure there's leopard down there somewhere. Very strong wind starting to blow by the way. the final answer is nobody will know whether it was a leopard that killed it or a hyena that killed it and maybe a leopard didn't even enter the equation because it was definitely the hyena that ended up with it we're going Galaga shortcut now we're going to head a little bit northeast up to Buffalo Cut Line Doug. Doug's saying that a while ago I mentioned we would not be seeing guinea fowl at the dam. Uh, Doug, if it was a while ago, it was only for maybe that afternoon or that day or that it could have been for just 
that day. Um, Guinea fowl are at the dam again. I mean, guinea fowl are all over the place. It could have been at a time when they were having babies, but it's, it's way out of context now, Doug, so I'm, I'm not too sure what I would have been referring to. Um, it was more than likely, if I can think about it, it was when they had chicks and they were in these very long dry grasses and we, we would, would only see them occasionally um, when the chicks were very, very small and they would they very seldom show themselves in the open. It's only when their chicks get a little bit bigger and they start flying that that they can venture back to the you know, back to areas where it's more open. That was gosh Doug, that must have been a few months ago. But that kind of statement could have only could have only been valid for a few days or a very short period of time. So uh, I, I would have to go back in time to know what it was or why it was that I said something like that. That's something on my Come here, child. Little green crab spider that was on my hat. Super sunny Sunday. I hope you're all having a fantastic weekend and a lovely Sunday. Fun day Sunday. Okay, thank you. The viewers have given me a challenge. They want to see five feathers in my hat today. You know, strange that you should say that because as I was leaving my room and I had quite a bit on my mind, not the least of which was the fact that I'm worried, we're all worried about Seb. No, we're not, not worried, but you know, there's concern, brotherly concern. But I meant to bring some feathers and, and actually put a new one in my hat because I've got a few old feathers at home and it was triggered because I've got a piece of a glossy starlings feather that must have blown onto the floor from somewhere or fallen out of a book and I was trying to clean up my mess a little bit today and I found it well it seems it's easier it's easier to find leopard than it is to clean up my mess because I get distracted, but then I didn't need to say that because of course you all know that. But I meant to bring some feathers and put, but it means finding feathers or alternatively chasing birds. I don't have the energy. Wait, wait, let me have, let me have something to drink. It might give me wings. Gee, I wish I could get paid to say that. <laughs> What's a bad combination? No, I know I shouldn't because it's got caffeine in it. I'm not allowed it. I felt like, you know what, it's, it's, it's been helping me while I've been sick. It's sapping me from my... The, the, it's just sapped all my energy. This has just helped a little bit. That'll be the wings. What? <laughs> <laughs> The viewers want to know why I've got two different colored shoes on. Because. Full stop. No. Because. Exclamation mark. Is there any reason why I shouldn't have two different colored shoes on? I have my shorts are a different color to my shirt. Um. Dafka, it's that's it's, it's because because I can because it's comfortable because I got two different sized legs and I got two different feet 
and because they make shoes identical for the left foot and the right foot and my feet and and and, and because it's comfortable because my right leg's shorter than my left leg and the br dark brown shoe's got a higher heel than the, short, the light brown shoe so it makes me stop walking in circles what well, stops me walking in circles because it's out of the box because I don't like pigeonholes because I can because I very seldom wear shoes and the lights were out last night and no that's just an excuse I could also say maybe because the hyena stole one of each but I'd be lying because it was other shoes that the hyenas got I left those in Cape Town and my sister I told my sister in law she could throw them away because these are just pep store specials they're like 59.99 specials and they're more where they came from and they're comfortable that's it, they're comfortable. Hello Impala, where are your babies? Did the lightning frighten any babies out of you last night? <laughs> it would have frightened a baby out of me, that one that tracked the rider. I jumped a mile. I don't know, that was, that was a, that was, and that's I think that, as well. that was the one that blew the power. That must have been the one that hit, that, that blew, See, just try and get to a point where we can see these children there eh? hiding please do let us know um, it's getting close these impala ewes are getting very very big they're gonna start lambing we you know the fact that we've already had a thunderstorm actually might prompt them to birth early so get your dates in at the moment we've got only like about five dates and I'm just send it to well I suppose I've started the list so I mean send it to my email at the moment you could probably send it to questions while we're on drive and any question that comes through when we're on drive about impala dates can be forwarded to me I'm starting a little booklet a little I'm writing them down I don't know I like writing things so rather than putting it on electronic media a little piece of paper in FC actually that's got a few dates on it that I need to but as long as as long as it is like everything else like the empty, the, 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 the used coffee cups and the empty bottles of water and as long as it's like everything else in FC it doesn't get moved and it doesn't get taken away It'll still, it'll still be there. <laughs> You're implying that we're messy. No. <laughs> no, not, not at all. One in a hundred people ask me, wow. Yoga. Viewers want to know how Teddy's doing. I had a wonderful morning with Teddy. I was following lion tracks and I was I just happened to be on Zoe's road. I was intending on going to the hyena den anyway, but I got sidetracked as I usually do, and I got onto some lion tracks. And while when I went when I went past Rebecca's Road Junction, I just stopped on Zoe's and looked down towards the den to see if there was anything there, and um, just saw the one adult lying at the entrance to the den sunning, and thought I'd go back later and carried on tracking the lion. And eventually, I went back to the den. Yeah, there's lion tracks. I mean, you can hardly see. Oh, no, there you can see them nice. 
But these are males. These must be the Kahuma boys. Like, oh no. The Timbers. Heading east. I'll find out from the guys when they start like, this morning. Where they were. Anyways, cut a long story short if I can. Teddy eventually emerged. And the stream was really stroppy, choppy, stroppy, choppy. But I sat there for a long time and eventually the first pair of youngsters, or rather the, the one pair of youngsters came out. And then the second pair of youngsters came out. And we had Teddy and two pairs of youngsters. Those older cubs. And it was wonderful. It was quite amazing because Teddy had come out and was starting to suck. Oh, it was a giraffe crossing the road down there near the dam. We can stop and we can look down the road at the giraffe maybe. It hasn't crossed the road, just standing in the road. And as these other youngsters emerged, this, this, this female was lying on her side right at the entrance uh, and with her butt almost sort of in the entrance so they actually had to climb over her thighs to get out of the den and of course their mothers weren't there and they were obviously a little hungry and there was one youngster that pretended to lick her pretended to sort of greet her and lick her but got a little bit too close to that mammary and as soon as it nearly tried to start suckling she jumped up and she reprimanded it like well, us humans are not allowed to reprimand our children, but she really gave it a what for, and it didn't try to even suckle again. But then eventually those four little hooligans ran off through the drainage line, just left Teddy and its mom. Let's go closer to this giraffe. And just left Teddy and mom, Teddy suckling. Teddy's looking fantastic. There was... He was standing facing us at one point and the light was just right. It's like looking at a melanistic jaguar, like a black panther. And you could see the spots, you could see markings on Teddy that I never haven't seen before. And not just black anymore. Hmm? Huh? Huh? <laughs> Texans back. I'm just going to talk to the guys before I get low because I know I'm not going to get radio comms there. Hey Tex, welcome back. Maybe he hasn't been away. I've been away. Tex, then come in. No. No good. Tex, then come in. Hey Tex, welcome back. Okay, yeah, I started Galago shortcut. I did a little turn around um, western edge of quarantine, and then I've done Galago shortcut up onto Gary onto Buffalo Cut Line. Yeah, just trying to And negative, not this afternoon. Okay, PC Kaya was active this morning. Uh, there was Ngala, I believe, Machingis that I found them, Konzo, on Junction, Zoe's, and Filament's cut line. They headed up to Impala Plains and then headed west and south again to Arethusa. And I've got Ngala and Konzo on Bibbles of cut line. I must find out. I don't know if Ephraim and uh, Henry followed up on it this morning. Okay, so
Who's asking this? When do I think Impala Land will be here? October 21st or 28th? My guess is November the 5th. But, of course, that's the whole point of the guessing game. Everybody's got to send in one date, I think. Eileen and Sarah. Okay, so, um, maybe that, just forward that email to me, markajuma.com, and I'll write those dates down. First, it's not very far away. But, you know... They're looking big. They're looking very big. So, the emails are off. So, I don't think these were Talalas that were at Sydney's Dam, because those look like big tracks of males. Oh, and there's Big Daddy. The younger bull, and here comes a huge male look at the size of him compared to that young bull and that young bull's not it's not a not a, a lightweight either I mean a young bull is a little bit short of an adult but there's a giraffe of note Obviously the bigger bull is much further behind this younger bull. I'm going to try and go around them to the other side, get a better look at them. As we go, as we go on to Sandy Patch North. I think we'll do Sandy Patch North, come back up north on... Rainwind coming up from the south. There's definitely a big storm brewing down there again. The perfect summer would have this almost every afternoon in some form or another. The thunderstorms rolling in like it was in my youth. what we just saw was a squirrel oh. Oh. squirrel running with a sort of half a quarry bush in its mouth but I mean this bunch of leaves was bigger than the squirrel <laughs> it was quite funny it must be sort of nesting material using maybe something in the tannins of the leaves that will help in the nest new leaves quite soft perhaps who knows Oh, yeah, it's nice. This will be nice. Got that younger bull now moving towards that big old bull that's feeding now. Beautiful light. This is the light I'm talking about. Now, oh, come, little. Oh, sorry, Tara, I'm going to move again. Are you moving again? Um, yeah, let me just move forward a bit and level off. I just stopped quickly because I saw that younger bull walking and I thought he was going to walk into frame with the older bull, but of course now. The bigger bull's moving out of frame. I want him, I want to see. He's dark. He's, 
handsome. He's tall, dark, and handsome, ladies. Except now we can't see because it's getting too thick. Moving into bush. This is a, such incredible life, though. To see animal like giraffe or leopard or, uh, or actually anything really. Animals just have really incredible clothes about them when it's in life like this. Is he visible? Yeah, I guess. Oh, that in the way. Look at that, just look how thick that neck is. A little bit of a bulge halfway down through his neck, but that might be a bit of calcification of the bone. After 20 years, a giraffe bull, 20 to 25 years, Giraffe had his fair share of sparring and enough neck injuries to keep a chiro chiropractor busy for the rest of his life. But they have a remarkable resilience and their bodies have this incredible ability to, to build up calcium around any damage to or potential damage to, to bone, particularly the spinal column. And I've found carcasses of giraffe after lion have finished with them where they have fused vertebrae in the neck after an injury. That's a kind of injury that can only result from sparring. Okay, well. In contrast to that very very thick neck, I mean it was muscular. It was, it was, I mean it was almost like it was like a heavyweight boxer compared to this featherweight of a little boy. That, and and as I say, I mean this young bull is already bigger than most females, but he's dwarfed by that big darker bull we've just seen. I was hoping to see them together, and this little boy is probably getting a few lessons from the old man. Might get it. He carries on walking. He goes and shares the same tree, which he's about to.
<laughs> there we go. Took his cue. Cross frame, left to right. Pretend there's no camera. Keep on walking on. Keep on keeping on. The ever present ox picker. Exit frame right behind Quarry Bush. I like it when they follow cues. And then, as though they didn't even exist, there's no sign of giraffe at all. No, I can't see. Oh, okay, there I saw a glimpse of one. And we'll see them again as we get, go down Sandy Patch North towards Sandy Patch. Going the same way as us. Hello, man. He's got a quite a stiff. You can see his left, his left leg. You can see he's got a very stiff hip. Probably got arthritis, old man. How stiff that hip is. It's not what like he would be in. He's barely bending his knee as well. He needs, it looks like he needs hip replacement. Here's a knob thorn still in flower. Catch you later. Well, once again, look at the darkness to the south. I can see us maybe having to race home again tonight. For a giraffe at the moment, it must be walk like walking through the world best salad bar. After the last few months of probably battling to find decent nutrition, it's it's suddenly come to a point for giraffe where there's a smorgasbord. There's a and he's just like walking through a giant salad bowl. Bye, boys. Merci beaucoup. Tout d'abord.
Muchas gracias. Danke schön. Tomo arigato. Santesana, thank you. Silver cluster leaf beginning to get its leaves. Naturally, they're coming out in little clusters. It's good being it hasn't got any flowers. Getting dark quickly, ladies and gentlemen. And we're going to lose the sun now because there's another storm to the northwest. Probably raining over Hood Sprite right now. Hello ladies and gents, spawn bulls, wax bulls, starlings, doves, bird party. Okay, naturally because of the status quo, we are not starting our checklist challenge today. Might even take a little while. Might be a couple of days. Tara might start it or Seb might start it. But I missed out on this morning. I'd like to have it continuous with only interruption being rain. So until we get good stream and until we're back on a level kill, we'll just have to wait. kill not level let's go to Aubrey's Road we're gonna go back up to Bibbles of Cut Line and I want to go to the fire break and Tambuti Dam Bubu Road <laughs> nothing no dwarf mongoose disappeared down the termite mound and, well, to be honest... You look like you were just about to start an opera song or something and changed your mind. Pardon? You look like you were just about to start an opera song and changed your mind. I did. It was a sudden inspirational operetta about yeah, dwarf, mon about dwarf mongoose. It's good and clean and fresh. -la -la. I mean the road. Nobody's driven here, so my foot. I am the first tracks. You ever had the extreme privilege of being the first and only footprints on a beach? And they're all tire tracks here, but that's before the rain. even better after really heavy rain and the roads are washed completely clean and being the first footprints along with the likes of and it's still muddy and the first footprints along with the likes of either elephant or leopard and after that day it dries up a little bit and for weeks afterwards when you drive that road because it was so muddy all you can see are these elephant prints and your own prints that are so it's like indelible it's like if the world were to change suddenly they would become these fossilized prints and future archaeologists would say oh look there was a human walking with elephants and lions hmm pardon Helen. Helen. resin bush and flower I need to find the flower. 
I need it. Flowers for the ladies. There's a flower. I knew I could find a flower. I just gotta put flower in my mind and I can find a flower. Where am I looking? Oh, yeah, tiny little flowers. You see, it's not, it's not a big showy rose. It's a delicate, minute little dwarf hibiscus there's another one lower down and it's, it's, a, it's at least a day old and it's starting to turn pink and by tomorrow it'll be red just before it dies it goes as it closes up it becomes almost crimson some of them where's the one further down? oh, oh that side yeah, there are a couple of little pink ones. Little closed up ones that are going pink. Miniature hibiscus or dwarf hibiscus. And it is, I mean, when you look at it in, in <laughs> close up. And I'll try and find, I'm going to put together a bunch of little ones, um, shots. Because we are going into the rainy season, I'm expecting we're going to end up having to sit in FC on a rainy morning or a rainy afternoon and chat to you. And of course, it would be nice to get some pictures up and try and find you some of my photos of some of the dwarf hibiscus I get. Same species, same plant, back at home. Photographing the same flower, different times of the day, flip dies. Mark coming through the Oh. Okay. Mark the name. Oh, okay. Alright, copy that. I probably know why, probably because it moved and the one wire came out of that chocolate block. Okay, yeah, but uh, just the wiring from that radio, where the wire comes, the main power wire that comes out of that radio, it goes into a connector, and it probably the, the negative has come out of that, and uh, probably just needs to be shoved back in, and that radio will come back online. Okay. Sorry, guys. So, maybe you want to go into your channel one. Uh, Eugene? Um, I copy him on channel one. Okay, that's better. We don't disturb the drive. Okay, that's better than I don't. Uh, disturb the drive. Oh, I don't even know if it's going through. I'm not getting any sound of repeater. But I'm sure you can hear me. It's just me hearing the guys. So I don't need this in my ear anymore. Because for some reason, the radio stopped working in FC. So we're going to use this radio for questions. Connection to FC. Cool. Get that go again. No, this isn't gonna work. So 
my children. Keep this in my ear just in case that radio comes back online. And I'm going down the fiber, not the main road. One place we got to look carefully for flowers is this fire break because although we haven't seen flowers here in the last couple of years, certain flowers doesn't mean that they're not here. They might just not have been the right sequence or frequency of rain and sun. All the xerophytes are getting their new leaves, what we call the bushman's candle or baboon's tail. Again, huh? again, <laughs> I don't think what I ate. It was beans. Oh, beans. Had beans for lunch. Does that give you a hiccup? Yeah, I think so. Mark the date and the, and the, and the beans and the hiccups, and you might find. I'm not going to remove a branch from the road. The station's gonna get an update, please. Mark, good afternoon. All the guys from you guys, there is a mark because of the two stand count. That's the two complaints. So, but I'll come down just to help you on the way from the other to check it out. Uh, thanks, Mpo. Um, so far, not much on Western Gary, but I haven't been very far. Hey, but you know if the guys followed that in Gala, I'm going on. It was a cut line this morning. Okay, thanks. I just saw some now, Gallagher shortcut with Bevel's a cut line, but I wasn't up this way this morning, I was with those other tracks down on Zoe's. Okay, I don't know if you got me earlier, Jacques, or rather this morning, but I found where those Makoti were, there was a marlet killed somewhere on quarantine. Uh, 
No, I just found a shoulder blade and um, there was some leopard face on it. Yeah, drag marks heading from there towards the den was an impala. Uh, that's why that uh, that Mafazi, that mother of the cub, was so fat. Ooh, cold and grey. Yes, I do. Great, radio's fixed in FC. Except that vulture feather was full of stuff that I didn't want. Like stomach contents and vulture feces, guano, vulture guano. So that's why that vulture feather wasn't an option. But definitely if I find a feather, it's not something that you can seek out. It's not something you can go and look for and find. I pick up almost every feather that I see. The problem is, after a storm like last night, no feathers are going to have... Unless a feather fell out of a bird today, I'm not going to find any decent feathers. Uh, very, very stiff challenge, but I haven't forgotten to look for feathers. I only got four to find. Yeah, but I was asked to find five. Oh. I thought the challenge was five in your hand. There was a, there is a, there's a water thing. I can't see it too well. Yeah. Maybe there, through this gap coming up now. There. Like a little radio controlled car disappeared. Gee, this came in fast. No, it did. Fast and furious. It's like it's a completely different day with completely different feels. Quite ominous actually. <laughs> oh, how long does a giraffe sleep? I don't think you can measure. Is this Eric? Uh, it's not something you can measure. There's no. There's no. There, there's, giraffe does off from time to time, but giraffe, like most herbivores, don't. They don't sleep the way herbiv or the way the way carnivores or omnivores. They don't sleep the way we know sleep. So they might snatch five minutes here and ten minutes there. But you know, when you've got a bunch of things that want to eat you, it's just not really wise to go to sleep. But you can't go to sleep for a couple of hours. It just doesn't work that way. Life doesn't work that way. Um, now, this kind of weather, giraffe, well, no, actually they'll be feeding, but it could get to me where either it's very, very hot, or it's cold and miserable, and a giraffe will tuck its legs underneath it, and it'll sit down and keep its head, head up, and it'll doze off for a while. But it's not sleeping. Eh? You see, this is something and I wish I could try and explain better. It's not like it closes its eyes and it goes into dreamland. Maybe it's, a, it's more a, 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 a state of complete relaxation <coughs> where it'll be still even chewing, the, as, as subconscious as it does breathe, it so it chews the cud. And there are very, I mean, I've seen it maybe not even a handful of times in my lifetime of a giraffe with its head turned back and resting maybe on its knee or something when it might have, might actually close its eyes and doze off for a couple of minutes. But it's, that's so rare. I've actually got a photograph of it. I can put it up on Wirecast one of these days. But it is, that's a very rare occurrence. And so it's not like you can you, you can time a giraffe sleeping, is it? Where one giraffe will do it for five seconds, another will do it for maybe five minutes. It's, it, numbers don't work in the bush because every single animal works on a different. You can see. I wish I could explain this better. 
Um, and that's why I always say it depends. It is always a, it is always a the, the start to an answer is it depends because there, there, there's so many influencing factors on what animals do that it's not something you can write in a book and say giraffe sleep for 20 minutes and you can follow a giraffe for, for f- 7 days a week 24 hours a day and you will notice that every single X number of hours it sits down for 20 minutes and it sleeps life doesn't work that way a giraffe might go for weeks and never sit down and sleep <coughs> maybe because <coughs> the predator level or conditions just won't allow it to so it's it's not something that has a very simple and straightforward answer I'm afraid Hang on, Eugene, please. Uh, Abel, sorry, where's that slumby? If I touch you with the bar, it's okay. Okay, thanks. Okay, Eugene, go. Hello giraffe, another big dark male giraffe we have here. Hello Raisa, nice to hear from you again. Um, <coughs> Raisa, I am more or less, I was about actually to radio Henry because this, I think this is more or less where he saw Misha this morning. Um, I think he knows Misha, he's one of the Viotella... <coughs> For your tele guides, sorry, let me get some water down my throat. But this is where he was seen, somewhere here. We're on Mvubu Road, we're heading south. And it was somewhere here that is just north of Wuyatela. But this leopard was seen and he went into the bandage line. So I'm just going to see if I can find tracks. And in a second, in fact, I'm going to radio Henry now and find out more or less because that's why one of the reasons why I came here and I'm willing to spend the next 20 minutes if it was Mishu I'm going to spend the next 20 minutes looking for this leopard because and I know I've got I've got a lot of people that will back me up on that to try whatever we can if it was Mishu Henry come in See how that oxpecker combs through the fur of the of the giraffe. It's actually got a beak that's very that's highly specialized to be able to do that. It's gonna rain again tonight, I think. <laughs> a little bit different to the way a giraffe blows his nose, yes. Hey old man. He's also got quite a th- thick neck, but he's got quite a scarred neck too. Look at that. Eating all this lovely growth. Never mind the thorns. Bypassing all of those little hooked thorns that would tear our skin poetry just started getting new leaves and they're just all being systematically picked yum 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 I've got a knob thorn outside my door at home it's coming into leaf and I've, I've often if I've been even now when I've been there in spring 
bitten off a few leaves that are at head height. They're not bitter when they're fresh, they're only bitter when they get older. It's like watercress. He's, he's actually enjoying it. Look at that. Using the tongue to pull the branch in towards him. Hey, Marsha. Does a Janet only eat meat? Very good question, Marsha. Um, considering a civet is very much omnivorous and, in fact, is <coughs> it, it'll dine exclusively on things like the Bellanites, the torchwood fruit, when the torchwoods are in fruit, or when the raisin bush is in fruit, but in that it, it entirely exists on meat. It is a little hunter, and it, I'd say 90, maybe 95% of its diet is meat. I uh, would imagine that sometimes it might revert to... I don't know, I'll, I must check on that. See if there are any records of Janet's taking things like um, members of the cucumber family. Okay, here we are. Tracks are heading. This must be Henry's track from this morning. I can't get him on the radio, but this must be more or less very far where he must have seen this leopard. We're gonna just sniff around and have a look. Mm, he went that way, went over that spike thorn over there. Henry, Henry. I mean, from here I can see FC, which means that the leopard that I, that's probably been bothering Franklin's all day is possibly the same leopard that has been here waiting for my laundry to hang on the line. Actually, I should put that on eBay. My And who's that from? Oh, hello, Ellen, Illinois. Hi, Ellen. Thanks for your question. Ellen, I wonder when we're going to get back to Brush College School, too. And Ellen's classroom. But Ellen was asking <coughs> a question about. Oh, there's a flower coming. On that Xanthodesia. Well, it's not a Xanthodesia, but it's related to the Xanthodesia, and I forget its name. The lily from Luck. Same family as the. Well, it looks like an Arum lily, but it's just green. And there's a skull. Looks like it might be a skull up ahead on the ground, or a bone. Um, Ellen was asking about that monitor lizard that Shivinzi was eating the other day. A very interesting. very interesting piece of skull on the ground might I add okay Ellen uh, since I've just been distracted by something excuse me a moment we'll get back to Shivinzi and the monitor lizard shortly I have to show you this and talk about it first I'm gonna ask for guesses take a while in fact there we go let me put this here 
so that you can see I don't have to hold it and I'll wait till an email comes in and I'll talk to Ellen about Shavinzi. Ellen was asking with Shavinzi and that monitor lizard would Karula eat the monitor lizard and what will a leopard not eat <coughs> so any guesses what this is questions at juma.com Yaka will email me the first one or two answers um, Ellen Karula probably wouldn't even go for a monitor lizard because she'd know it would be it, it, it's more energy consumptive trying to eat it that, and catch it than it is in what you get what what she's going to get back in by eating it they're not that much on the monitor I suppose they a bit of muscle and stuff but they've got a very thick skin a very leathery skin and uh, I guess in desperation I mean obviously leopards will probably take one if they're hungry and they need to but they don't really waste their time on it the reason why Shavinzi took that monitor is because it moved and that's just that is the way a leopard learns a leopard learns she's probably eaten smaller lizards um, probably lying in the grass waiting for mom to come back heard something running through the grass and she probably attacked it uh, the, 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 the fact that she got it is probably because the monitor lizard went into a stupor more than anything else I, mean, I know those monitor lizards are fast and they can climb trees better than a leopard and I would have imagined that it would be able to get away from her but it probably went into the sort of playing possum mode and that is when I mean when when I first saw from FC her eating on it <coughs> excuse me I was convinced that she was that, that it was alive and it was only after she left it that it started trying to climb walk away that I realized that it must have been in a stupor what will leopards not eat I'd have to think about it there's probably a range of things that they won't eat they're probably I mean they're, 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 there are a number of leopards that have probably tried to eat porcupines they don't know how to kill the porcupine and they become injured in the process and they probably won't go for a porcupine again there's some leopards that skillfully can kill a porcupine and they know how to get into them without getting quills into their paws and into their faces and they, they then relish them so a lot of it has got to do with the learning process and what they learn in time I would sit I would I would hazard a guess and say that Shavinzi is not likely to go for another monitor lizard based on the experience that she's just had with this one. The, the amount of energy she got back after trying to chew on it, and every, I mean, it was good jaw muscle work, but to be honest, I don't think she'll probably go for a monitor lizard again. Anyways, um, I'm going to look around for leopard. While I'm waiting for an answer, we'll, I don't really want to keep this. But anyways, you, okay, we got an answer. Some, come, tell me. Yorick. Yorick. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Linda. Linda Revere. Linda says buffalo. Yeah, you're right, Linda. This is the beginning of the snout, and this is what we call the bus. Yeah, boss. <laughs> and of course, this would be covered in horn cover, in in the black horn covering, and of course, that would be a lot more dense than this. But what I want to show you, which is very interesting, is this almost honeycomb uh, texture. In terms of giving the horn strength, this is filled with marrow and 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 network of uh, some of it is hollow, but veins and blood vessels and, and, and things. This is where the horn comes out. So the horn would come here and then curve up, uh, covered in or rather the, the skull would do that and then covered in horn as well. But this honeycombing effect is what gives it that. That gives it the, the shock absorber effect when these buffaloes hit heads. This is where it's the, the bulkiest in terms of horn material. But to protect the brain, it's got all of these little cavities and all the sort of honeycomb effect. If we look on the inside this is the, the these are the nasal passages here that run down this is where the snout runs down and this little area here this is actually the brain case this is this little bit here is the brain case and you can see how much of this this bulk of of honeycomb material is around that exists around this tiny little here's the brain case about the size of my fist in fact 
See, look, my fist even fits in there. It's got indentations for my knuckle. But that's about the size of the brain. And this is the size of the buff. This huge area around this buffalo skull that helps protect the brain when they're hitting heads. When there's 800 kilograms of buffalo hitting 800 kilograms of buffalo. Okay, so they're about 15, 16 right guesses and about 5 wrong. Well done, everyone. <coughs> Henry, Henry. Henry, I found you on Konzo where you had that ingwe this morning. How far down did you, did you follow him? Ephraim, Ephraim. Yeah, uh, sorry, I'm full. When you left that Ingwe on Vubu Road, was he mobile or was he Lalapan? Yeah, I was Lalapan. I'm a cool shot in the jungle then. Okay, copy, thanks. left him lying down. The thing is that with this kind of weather a leopard could possibly move already or have moved and I am slightly off of whatever track it was that they came, well the tracks that they made in. I don't know if this is going to work. That was a different one that hit the aerial. Okay. No, there's the one I said staying. Yeah. Still staying. Miss you. Uh oh, hidden tree stop. There's a nice place for a leopard to be. Rubin down the bottom. I think he might still be here. I think this is the place where I've come out when I've taken that track 
from that side and I've actually come out this way. I've come through here with the jigger. I drove up here with the jigger. Sure. Ready? Yeah. I followed the wild dog through here one day with Mike Williamson. Oh, that's good. Okay. I did wonder how you got through that. But I wouldn't do that in this car. I'd do it in my land as well. Because it's... Yeah, I'm I'd try to get into both. No, I did get a puncture then. On another, there was a, hmm? Why does that not surprise me? It was another occasion that I got the puncture. Yeah. The first time I drove it. When I was with Mike Williamson, it was the second time I drove it. I'm going to have a look, see, just down the bottom here quickly. Voices. I mean, we got, we're just right next to camp. But there's a tree, you can't see it from. I'm going to try and get in here. There's old bone fragments here, too, from an old kill. But, um, probably, I looked at it and I thought, oh, it's a leadwood, and then I had to look closer again. And it's actually a buffalo thorn. How's that for buffalo thorn? I don't know, can you see it from there? That thing that's all bent. Yeah. That's a buffalo thorn. Sure, that does look like a leopard. 
Doesn't do it justice. Got the mast behind. Hmm? Got the mast. Now there's the mast in the distance. quite find an opening but yeah uh, not many specimens of that size of buffalo thorns in the world of well, this world at any rate okay let's go down to the dam today we might be in for a big surprise for today is the day when teddy bears have their pick nick pick nick pardon i'll be the red bull kicking in first <laughs> wait i need to go there <laughs> no i was just thinking about the singing uh. <laughs> I don't have to do anything and Tara's got the giggles. It's nice to be able to make a lady laugh so easily. I wish I could do that with all women. One of the things that women like is a man who can make them laugh. Pardon? you got cabin fever already. We've only been back three days. Okay. What's going to happen in three weeks? Okay, it's going to probably be easier for us to just get out here to roommate than it is to go back to the road from here. And we'll have a look in front of room eight. And, um, Yako Eugene, are there any guests still in camp? Yeah, but I mean, anybody not out of, not out on drive, anybody still there? Thank you, Eugene. I have to get there first. Squeeze through Buffalo Thorn. Squeeze through. I was saying earlier about eBay, I should put my Mishu shirt on eBay. 
The one that he pulled off the line and chewed the corner off. The old Safari TV one. Bidding can start at $100. climb the Land Rover over a rock. Boom. There's a rock. They're a rarity in this part of the world. Some of you might wonder what we are doing. <laughs> Some of us might wonder what we are doing too. Let's just keep wondering until something happens that might give us answers as to why we are doing what we are doing. I say we because I'm trying to divide the blame here, but actually it's me. I'm doing it. It's all just me. Okay, that's what I'm doing. Seeing how, more, how much I can do with this Land Rover without getting a puncture. Trying to get out of here. I could have gone back up to the road, but the whole purpose of this exercise is looking for a leopard. And so that old hyena in there. Yeah. And uh, well, this is where we're going to find him. The reason why we're so doggedly determined to find this cat is because. He's been AWOL for some time. He has been exploring other worlds for, I'm trying to think, somebody might be able to help us out here. When did we last see Young Mishu? Might have been at the beginning of the year. It was a long time, it was months ago. Have we... Was when they were on quarantine and Induna was proudly standing on that log with the wildebeest leg, the leg of that wildebeest car, which was the beginning of the year. I think they're probably about two and a half. Um, Yeah, two and a half years old. Um, just think that next month, Mission and Duna are going to be three years old. Mishu, folks, spelled M I X O X in Shanghai is pronounced with an S H. And um, they're brothers. Shivinzi and Shivambalana are bigger brothers. We've seen Induna with Shivinzi and Shivambalana. And the father, Yambilu Yodan, and Karula Mom then it's important for us to try and find him and to get a glimpse of him and to say hello, Mishu. <coughs> He's a special little boy. He's not a little boy anymore. He's going to be three years old soon. <coughs> the cubs are going to be a year old in a month's time. this little bit of drainage line because there's a little sandy patch to this dry riverbed and it's kind of the ideal place that a leopard would really walk when it's walking from one place to another <coughs> and it's possible that if he did go from where he was if he did manage to come down this way to uh, whoa, towards the lodge then I would find his footprints here
but he didn't walk here on the sand, didn't come in this way. He could be here somewhere. I mean, the, the very big buffalo thorn we were looking at was just a little bit further here and just a little bit around the bend. Not as much around the bend as I am. But. Pardon? Makes two of us. Doesn't look like he walked this way, but that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean that he's not around. Just up here on this ridge, there's another. Just over here is another little drainage line, um, and this drainage line runs up towards, you could say, Gallagher Shortcut Junction with Guitella uh, Access Road. That's where the, it actually starts. So it, it peters out into just a bush. That's just in front of our camp, in front of Old FC, and that's where, or should we say the back of our camp, front of, back of. But that's where Franklins and animals are making a lot of noise today, so there's a good possibility that that is where he is. We'll have a look around Gary Dam, and maybe he's here at Gary Dam somewhere, but it doesn't look like he walked down this way. Dogs are shouting. sand just to check the track. Mm. I think so. I really wanted to try and find some sign of this leopard. coming down to drink perfect right in front of room one that makes it all worthwhile doing what we've just been doing hmm. series medley of fruits primates both humans and monkeys responsible for this That's what they get out of the rooms, and that's what they break into the rooms for. They know that in the mini bar, little packets of fruit juice. Let's try this. One. It can be a bit bumpy, but let's try this way anyway. Small family unit. Mom and three kids.
Hey, thirsty. Been a hot day. Phone glove, carry them just in front of room one. Go again. How many people are there? Four, same as your, but this small slumby. No, I'm talking about the dove at Gary Dam. I'm a fuzzy three month pimpa. That other four, they were on Western Edge of Quarantine this morning. They must have gone from here north. Twenty second of April. Thanks, Eugene. Who was saying that? Was that Lynn in Canada? Someone mentioning 22nd of... Oh, Raisa. Thanks, Raisa. 22nd of April, last time we saw Mishu. Unusual tusks, this mother. Look how they come out of her face sideways. Reminds me of an elephant and I had a very intimate encounter with. Her tusks were about a bit longer and thinner than that. boy is probably about five maybe Hello Mrs. Ellie. Come and say hello. Yep. Come on. It's a pretty girl. Got quite an unusual texture to her forehead. That's jackalberry and it's fresh. You don't really want to eat it. Well, she's just pulling at it just to taste my reaction more than anything else, I reckon.
another sub adult female she could be pregnant with her first she's maybe in her late teen Very distinctive those tusks that that they are s that come out at such an angle like that. But she's a very she. I mean, she's also got incredible ears. I know there's something about her that's an amazing female there. But it looks like this other young female, the one at the back. You come and say hello, Mrs. Ellie. A good chance she might be pregnant with her first. She's not lactating. She hasn't lactated before. Um, her memories are just starting to, perhaps, just starting to swell. I don't think she's lactated before. But she is looking a little bit round below her hips. She had an itch. So that's. Big matriarch, this big girl we can see now. See how square her forehead is, by the way. And that female just behind her is probably about eight, maybe ten years old. Then there's a the little boy of about five, maybe six, and then this female, who may be about twelve, fifteen. Maybe I'd say just by the shape of things there on that that belly, that she's got a baby growing. My guess. She's the little one's trying to drink on the other side of her and she's saying no. She's gonna reprimand him or something in a minute. It's too old to drink. But she's probably pregnant again too. Well he stopped now. Cold. You want this blanket for your legs? Uh, we should have probably have that put in a washing machine <laughs> at some point. It's so heavy with dust. Uh, it's getting a bit chilly. Most of the darkness has moved off to the west. Very much higher cloud in the south now. I'm going to move a little bit, go back over that way. This is the top end of the dam. Now on our right hand side is where the water stops, but here on the left is where they dig for water because they get cleaner water. Birtles, you see it go in there? Okay, in this, in this little, just to the right, that main fork at the top. The, there, yes. Birtle starling nest. Birtle starling just went in there. Viewers are wanting to know if I can confirm that Ellie's pregnant. Yes, that big female looks pregnant, 
and so does that other young female look pregnant and then they're the two in between is the two youngsters one very young male a little boy and a there's, that one's coming in that starling's coming in with something for the whole for the nesting material probably sorry Tara what you looking at those mushrooms they're gonna stay there the starling's going into its nest other ones just come out of the nest and now the other one's going in so quick they put they're putting material in at the bottom they're probably making a nice bed at the bottom interestingly starlings are the one of the birds that are, are are most likely to use aromatic leaves and 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 leaves that help with uh, keeping down parasites and pests don't know what mushrooms those are but they must have come out in the last two well 24 hours no, they're older than that see I don't know whether that was nesting material or maybe it was food it had something in its beak but it will probably won't see it come out until the other one comes back with something so it might be food who knows when later it is when this one came back with something in and now it's calling to the mate and saying okay I'm done you can come back now okay off we go This morning I found what could be a yellow bull hornbull's nest near the hyena den, but it's, it's quite distant. We'd have to see if we can get there by by vehicle, get closer. it from this angle now. Uh, now I can see that hole in the tree. It's a natural hole. Starlings are not able to make their own holes like woodpeckers. In fact woodpeckers are the only woodpecker, only bird. No, barbets can make their own holes. Another bird related to the woodpeckers is the rhinac. But they can't make their own holes. Yeah, it also had something in its beak, but I couldn't see what it was. Yeah. It's a little bit too frequent to be food that size. I would say it's nesting material. like waiting for a cat
Okay, let's go back to elephants. They've come out of the hole as soon as I start. As as we move. Still not out of the hole. Oh well. little girl. Relax. It's me. Hello. It's me. Just me. And Tara. I did want to move a little bit more forward, but I didn't want to disturb her too much. Little boy is coming to have a look too. Brother and sister. You're gonna throw a stick at me now. <laughs> it was like I could read those gears in her head. <laughs> She's gonna come and throw it at me again because it didn't reach. Oh, here's Big Mama coming to see what baby's doing. Why her daughter's throwing sticks at me? Hello, Mrs. Ellie. I didn't do anything bad. I promise. Hello, Mrs. Ellie. Hello. Hello. And now you're brave because Mama's walked by. Did you get that on camera throwing the stick? Yeah. Hmm. It's like. I saw her look at the stick and I saw her trunk move and I saw it almost like joining the dots and, and it was quite cute. Okay, let's move. Not much of a view. Oops. And then we can sneak through here to the rest of the dam. I'm gonna go back. Used to be able to get around, but every season the elephants come by and, and different trees and different things in the different pathways. Suddenly. Egrets. Sorry. Oh, it's an unusual bird to have at the dam. Cattle egrets. We don't get them here very often.
Uh, I should have. I should have not even said who they were, actually. The beeping. Okay. I'll push it a little, a few minutes more, but batteries are beeping. What are you laughing at? <laughs> that cattle eager that's in the middle. Kind of fighting against the wind and he almost lost his balance. <laughs> also, looking at the water buck on the other side, it looks like he's testing urine on those females, for testing for estrus. <sighs> Wrong side, that's left. Oh, oh, oh. I can cheat with, I forgot, I've got all my books here, I can cheat with, I can find five feathers. Except I need a right wing feather. I only got left wing. I have feathers that are politically inclined. Or was he? I couldn't see. Looked like he was sniffing at her. Yeah. You know, if I'd thought about this carefully, I would have been able to do the feather thing. I would have been able to take feathers out of my book and pretend that I found them on the ground. Do, 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 do. That's wonderful. Thank you, Jean. Viewers are saying it's the best uh, drive with the uh, clear picture, etc., etc. That's great. Evidently, Seacom did something with their cable today. We haven't changed any of our settings or anything on our side. What about getting ready for a couple of hours of? relaxing lying down head to the wind the egrets are also getting ready for a bit more wind coming in hope i'm not going to disturb them blacksmith lapwing with them as well two blacksmith lapwings let's move on we're not going to be able to drive very much longer let's get... look what i got any guesses hmm yeah, it's so pretty. Interestingly, and Eugene can probably help me out with this. Although my Afrikaans is good, I can't directly translate. But the Afrikaans name for this bird is a tropan. In the early days, the settlers, perhaps the great trick when kids were using tarsi and carpels as toys, they did the toe bones of antelope and oxen as toys, or as oxen, and they built it in wooden wagons. Anyway, um, when the woman got married, because I couldn't get flowers or a, what is it called, a corsage, I think. They would use the feathers of this bird because they're so pretty. And tro punt, tro means marriage. What is the direct translation of punt, P-A-N-T? What? Uh, you're the last person I'll ask. <laughs> I want to hear what word. Tro punt. Tro punt. Tro is T-R-O-U. Ah, okay, thanks Eugene. Punt, P-A-N-T. Uh, Eugene's saying it's like an engagement ring. It's like a... a, 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 a well, the bride would... Well, not the bride, but... The young lady would get... And um, Yes. I think you get what I mean. They didn't have flowers and... Sorry, go. Yeah. Ah, uh, thanks, Eugene. That's the cicada. 
constant troll. Okay. But what does the catered it sound like then? Well, this catered it, I'll, I'll point to that too when I hear one, but these are cicadas. It's catered it's voice throwing me. These are cicadas, 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 oh. but those big ones. Only the male. Uh, and usually for the cicada, it's different to all the other animals that make uh, other insects that do what we call they stridulate to make a noise. The crickets, the grasshoppers, the katydids, the ants that make, that stridulate, um, even the arachnids that stridulate. Because there are some that do even scorpions stridulate. They'll use the 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 point of their sting and they've got ridges on the base of their tail and they'll scratch that and, and that's also a form of stridulation uh, making a noise either to in the case of insects to attract a mate in the case of some of them to act as a warning in the case of the scorpion to act as a warning it's like a snake that hisses what makes the cicada so different so loud and able to be so consistent is that it doesn't stridulate and you can almost hear the stridulate because they're rubbing a leg on a wing or a wing on an, on the thorax or a basically they're rubbing two body parts together and there's normally it's almost like a, a corrugation or, or a washboard they've got to move it back and forward so you hear that noise back you can hear the, 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 the change in pitch as it's moving its, it's limbs backwards and forwards the cicada makes a noise in such a way that it can produce this constant sound because it's got an entirely different organ to make that noise. Anyway, I just want to show you down the bottom there. Look at that gardenia in flower. Absolutely beautiful. I, uh, in, a, in a few minutes when it starts getting dark, the scent around that tree is going to be incredible. The white blossoms or the white flowers or the fresher flowers and as the flowers age, they start turning cream and then yellow and then eventually brown kind of like the yesterday today and tomorrow that has that the flowers go through different colors but we don't get yesterday and today and tomorrow here other than in a, as a gar imported garden plant and, and an or ornamental Viewers, some, one of the viewers wanting to know, are there wild edible mushrooms in South Africa? Yes, there are indeed. And uh, depending on the, the composition of the forest, because you've got to remember, mushroom essentially is a fungus or a fungi, and different fungi feed on different types of dead plant material, uh, including trees. And I know people in the Cape, down in the Cape, that go on mushroom hunting expeditions amongst the Feinbos after rains in forests and there are mushrooms here that are edible except I don't know the difference so I don't ever try these things right this the gardenia was beautiful and it has a beautiful scent but here's another one that I want to show you my other flower for the ladies for the day for the evening because I'm not hearing beeping again oh it has also an incredible scent and if you can catch this one blooming this profusely one. yeah there's there's a a little restaurant in Hoodsprite that I met Janine and Tara at while we were on leave it's a beautiful little restaurant made out of an old railway station it's called sleepers as in railway sleepers a lot of old railway memorabilia and just outside on the one fence probably about 15 feet high and maybe 20 feet wide is a jasmine creeper that is in full bloom and, uh, and and of course the jasmine you don't smell during the day you only really get the scent of it at night and there might only be a couple of flowers here but even so one would one would still maybe pick up the scent of them <coughs> that's a creeper the jasmine creeper for the ladies hello wax pools Onward ho! Guinea fowl are starting to fly into their tree to roost for the night. I'm just going to get past them. I want to get past them because we might disturb them. I want to get off the damn wall so that they can get into roost. 
You might be. You will probably be. I don't know who's zooming tonight, but whoever's zooming tonight, you will more than likely get a glimpse of a leopard. Uh, I don't know how possible it'll be to get a close-up of it unless it comes up to the camera. But if Misha was around, I'm pretty sure we might see him come to the dam today, tonight. Whatever leopard is around will be coming to the dam tonight. Hello, guineas. Well, well, a little bit early for the day. But I am going to have to say goodbye for now. The more we drain the battery, the shorter our drives are going to be. And if we just, it might be, we, we'll discuss this, but it might be for the next while that maybe we just do two and a half hour drives so we can consistently do two and a half hour drives because what might actually happen is that we're going to then eventually cut it, have to cut it to two hours and then until, well, we'll see. We'll have to figure that one out. I was going to just do something. Yes, just quickly before I go. Four postcards that came in. I tried to do them this morning. This is the first, the, these are some of the first of the, the new batch. There were one or two that came in. There was that one from, there was one from Canada and one from Texas came in in August. But New Mexico, beautiful trestle bridge in New Mexico with lovely um, autumn colors. Okay, Inverta, I'm getting there. Stop beeping. See, I'm a, I'm a railroad fan, and, and I, I just love this, 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 these bridges. I remember walking across one in Southern California. It was stunning. That's uh, Diane. Thank you, Diane. Kathy. A country lane, a country road, West Virginia. Are those maples? They look like maples love maples we used to have bonsai maples anyway thank you Kathy beautiful picture of the Oregon coast central Oregon also with uh, some autumn colors and a, quite a famous lighthouse I believe that lived that that is there um, this was sent from Eugene in Oregon I was saying this morning when I was talking about it that our Eugene from Vuyatela should go to Eugene in Oregon I've been to Eugene in Oregon. Um, so this is the Hector Head Lighthouse. Thank you, Sally. Shimomo. And then finally, from Chewy. <coughs> okay, right way this time. Yes, I had it this way this morning, and you've got the sort of, looks like there's this floating island in the sky, something out of, out of, um, what Star was the movie? Wars. No, not Star oh. Wars. Um, the, the Blue People. No, not the Smurfs. <laughs> <laughs> the famous 3D big movie oh, of camera Avatar. Avatar, yes. <laughs> and these floating rock worlds. <coughs> but I do this to a lot of photographs that I take when you've got perfect reflections in water and beautiful still water. Anyways. This it's is funny a how your eye tells you there's something wrong with it. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, then look at this tree line here. It's like, mm. Anyways. Because you've easily been a mountain the other way. I suppose. <laughs> but then you still had a floating rock. Laura. Suomi in Finland. I guess it's one of the fjords. Really beautiful picture from Finland, from Chewy. Thanks for those. And we've got a new wall starting, new postcard wall starting. And I'm um, sure so somebody will be going to the post box next week, taking out the new post, the new mail, the new postcards that come in. don't know what to say. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for questions. Thanks for your participation this afternoon. My name is Mark. Tara has been on camera. Eugene and Yako from Buyatela have been helping us out as directors in FC. They've had a crash course. They've done fantastically well. Thanks guys to you too. And from all of us here at Juma Game Reserve, good night, goodbye, and we'll see you tomorrow. Have a good week.